I'm Lauren Yee, and I'm the playwright of Cambodian Rock Band. I'm Joe No, and I play Chum in Cambodian Rock Band. So I met Lauren in 20... It's 14. 2014? Yeah. We talked about yeah. this. So I met Lauren in 2014 um, when I was working on her play, her last play, King of the Yees. And uh, I would like to say that Lauren liked my work. When she brought this play around, she had this idea for a Cambodian Rock Band. She brought it up and was like, you think you can get a group of actors together? And she brought me back. And so um, we did a little workshop of the, of the play. And after a, a break within, our, within, our, within her writing process, I was like, hey, Lauren, um, and she may refute this story, but <laughs> she, I, she was like, I was like, hey, Lauren, this play is, uh, means a lot to me. It touches me on a really personal level. And Lauren was like, like, yeah, I know all my plays are very universal. <laughs> you know, like universal Asian experience. And I was like, no, Lauren, you don't get it. My parents are survivors of Khmer Rouge. Um, they um, were in the camps for the um, pretty much all four years in which uh, the Khmer Rouge occupied uh, Cambodia. And uh, they worked through those labor camps and were very young people in that time. So my mother was like, 16, 16 through 19 uh, that around that time and my dad was like 22 when he left. Um, and uh, this goes on to include people in my family who are like my, my great uncle who is a musician, who is a, a, um, a live band karaoke keyboardist and bass player. And so when I told Lauren these stories, she's like, oh, okay, that changes everything. And so that's when our, my association with this play really began. And I started to share a lot of um, insight into my own family history that I think conscious in you nor subconscious, however you want to look at it, started to bleed into the character of Chum and also give some sort of depth and richness into the play. And um, even if it's not either word for word, it helped develop the characters that exist in the play. I, th I think without Joe, there's a version of this play that exists, like in an alternative universe. Like, it, you know, it's a, it's a strong story and it's compelling. Um, but I think the fact that, you know, he brings that experience, you know, growing up the child of survivors and like hearing his parents' stories. I think one thing that really stuck with me in my early conversations with Joe about this piece is just like about how his parents are, that I think oftentimes when we think of genocide or any trauma that you know a group of people goes through, we think of victims, we think of people who are kind of you know seen in sepia tone way back in history, and we forget that they were like young and vibrant and sexy and like full of hopes and dreams. And that also when trauma happens to people, there's a lot of different ways in which they might react. And, um, and I don't wanna speak for Joe, but I feel like one of the messages that I've gotten is that his parents are incredibly joyful, open people that kind of this, this very traumatic thing intersected with their lives and they responded by opening rather than closing. And so I think that directly influenced the piece that the father you see in the play is a survivor of the Khmer Rouge, but he's also someone who tells goofy dad jokes and wears a fanny pack and, you know, loves his family deeply and is a huge baseball fan. So it's just like that there's nuance and shade more so than I'm a victim, you should feel sorry for me. You should watch Cambodian rock band and you should love these characters. You should be like, I wanna meet them and I wanna know them. And I think that's the best way to understand really difficult history is to fall in love with people first. And I think the music also helps to do that. Yeah, you hit it on the head. Totally. Those are totally my parents. Yeah. Like absolutely my like parents. Like your mom's like, yeah. Yeah, my mom is, my mom is, genuinely like one of the happiest, most mm -hmm. joyful people you'll ever meet. And I think, yeah, that, I don't know if it's just simply a survival mechanism for what it is. I, I don't know if it is necessarily survival. For her, I think it's gratitude for life mm -hmm. that um, when I was growing up, I grew up in a sort of a mixed cultural area. Um, and for my mom, unlike other sort of 
what we call like a typical Asian American society, um, a lot of other Asian parents tend to be like, go be a doctor, go be a lawyer. They always were like, you should try to go be a doctor or a lawyer, but you should be happy if you are pursuing the thing you love. And so that's why I kind of get away with being an actor. Um, but they were very happy that we were happy and choosing things that we wanted to choose because I think they understood, they do understand that life is, can take anything away at any moment. And they lost a lot of that growing up in the, when they were literally 16, 17 years old. They had this wonderful, vibrant life in Badambang where my mom literally used to tell me stories where she's like, I would want, on New Year's, I would go watch five movies. It was great. And I would hit every theater and we'd watch a different movie. And she talked about the music and the lifestyle and like how the streets were so alive and beautiful. And she's like, and she tells me the story where she's like, one day, um, uh, she's like, one of the movie theaters, there were two people who ran in there and threw grenades into the audience. And she, I mean, she wasn't there, obviously, but she was like, we heard that the theater had, had people who threw grenades into the audience. And there were some survivors, but a lot of people died. And she and my mom was like, and then about a month or, she her timeline sketchy, but she's like, a month to three months later, the Khmer Rouge in the, was in the city. She was like, it was that, a sudden. And she's like, and everything changed overnight. And we were sent out into the, the fields to work. And so she's like, that's what we, we lived. We lived from moment to moment because we had no other choice but to do that. And their choices were always based on like, what can we cultivate in this moment to make us happy or um, to choose to live a better life in this moment rather than um, run away from it or, or, or pretend that it's not existing. Yeah, and it goes from everything, every step of life to like my mom, my parents getting married was like, you're gonna get married right now because we don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow or we're gonna leave the city right now and go towards the Thai border because that's when we've, we've heard that, you know, the Khmer, some other uh, Khmer Rouge people were coming around, the, whatever, like we have to get out of this right now. And so they always made choices on the spot and lived on the spot and in time.